Yeah, it's it's everyone's freezing. It's crazy. So uh, we're soft. Years ago, well, I think it can actually get really cold there, and you'll, you'd be surprised. The um, the 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 place where I live on the Pacific Coast is mm-hmm. actually very um, it's very warm compared to the rest of the country. Mm. Right? I mean, we get this Pacific breeze off of the coast, mm-hmm. and uh, it's it's probably the most i it's it's the best probably the best climate in Canada. I would mm. say. Um, so yes, and this is a, a virtual background, but there is snow on the ground. Okay. Yeah. See, we don't have that. That's Van- is that Vancouver proper where you are? Or are you on Victoria or what's the Victoria Island or Vancouver Island? Yeah. Where, Vancouver where are you? Island. Yeah. Vancouver You're on Island. Vancouver Island. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. My, uh, my mother married a guy, a uh, uh, good guy. He's from United States originally, but lives part-time up in a place called Bella Coola up Ooh. on the coast, not quite up to, they used to be called the Queen Victoria Islands. Now it's Haida Gwaii, or they have a different name now. This is just below where Alaska stops, and he's up in that area on the coast. And apparently, they're they're you know they're in the negatives because the some kind of Arctic wind whipping off the mountains. And I'm just like, okay, all right, yeah, if that's, yeah. If that's if that's what you're doing. But yeah, it's um, so yeah, we're we're that's why I see the snow right away. I'm like, ah, it's panic everywhere. It's freezing. So, so we're there in the city, you know how it gets, you know, people of course lose their mind. Yeah. So, so. I like, I like your comment on the, uh, on the uh, Keen episode because they talked about education. That was interesting. It was, it was like uh, you guys were, because it was what, 35 minutes or something like that. It was condensed yeah. and it was just, you know, a whole bunch of material crushed in, 35 minutes like I had to keep up you know it was really really enervating in that in that manner because um you know Keane's history you know he's talking about stuff that happened in the in the early 70s I I was I was born in the early 70s right and he's talking about it like it was yesterday and then what he's really good at is you know he'll explain this happened at the university and then it got flipped to this and then that philosophy disappeared and the people came in to replace it and you know, like he was talking about labor, and and I generally understand labor party per se as kind of what we would call the Democratic Party, I guess, kind of a more left leaning type. I, I I think if it's an equivalent, but um, but it sounds like there's some similarities to what he was talking about, where just like here in the states, the Labor Party there had some morals and some grounding, and it got you know bastardized and corrupted, which is what happened here. Um. And uh, but 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 it's it was interesting to listen listen to him go and cover these f- you know flips in the philosophies and who was controlling the schools and what happened and um and and you know he's uh now that like we talked about our first talk now that he's not in academia per se you know, it's a lot, you know, the shackles are off and he can, he can kind of operate the way he wants. I I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised that he's going into politics because, um, intelligent people are rare uh, to say the least in the political world. I mean, I live in New York city, so I'm, I'm ruled over by imbeciles no matter which way you look. So it's, uh, nuts. Well, well, building on that, I mean, um, inspiration wise though mm-hmm. so wouldn't, wouldn't it be nice if we could have something similar for you in in what way what do you mean yeah so um you know i mean your persona outside of school is the freelance teacher right i mean yes. there's a yeah uh so you know i don't know what your plans are as a teacher and when retirement looks at you know, it, you know, when it's on the horizon or whatever, but, mm-hmm. um, one of the freedoms that, that, that Steve, uh, I think has worked really hard for, uh, is, is, is his Patreon account. Mm. Right. And so, um, he has, I think the equivalent of, uh, a, a tenured, a tenured, um, 
compensation that he's uh, that he's secured for himself, basically hmm. in the, you know through the market, mm-hmm. and that's um, I think something that is a that's a worthwhile goal. I think it, it may yeah, sound yeah. like what, what are you talking, Dan? But I mean, um, I think we live in this kind of an age that if we if we carve out that niche for mm-hmm. Uh, you know, for that. And, you know, it may, maybe it um, at first, at first um, replicates, I guess, is that, that that'd be a fair, fair word, right? It, it, mm-hmm. it would replicate in hundreds, and then in mm-hmm. thousands. And then, um, you know, maybe it's not, maybe it's not a tremendous amount, right? But, um, and whether or not there's a need or not, I think the the freedom is something that uh, there's there's certainly a lot of uncertainty that approach that approaches the next 20, 30 years. Mm-hmm. Right. Oh, uh, for the, sure. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, uncertainty for sure. Yeah. I mean, the the some of the stuff I listen to in terms of podcasts, uncertainty might be hopefully you're, it's just uncertainty and not not very rough. But the yeah, the patron I heard him mention his patron. I didn't know he had a Patreon, but yeah, I guess the you know, you have enough patrons even if each person isn't you know donating at the maximum tier yeah it's 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 i like it that he's carved that niche out um somewhat ironic in a free market for a neo keynesian but uh um but yeah that's <clears throat> I, didn't, I hadn't really quite made the connection that that's a nice um that's a nice play on his part well played to have that there and then give his patrons you know, you know, give them, give them what they like, give them what they want, interact with them and, and have it, have it pay off. And it enables him to do things like, he, like, you know, go into politics. It was actually the idea of the, the original, the URL isn't mine anymore. I, I, I let it go, but I had the freelance teacher.com and my timing on so many things is just terrible. That was one of them. It was a subscription site with forums in it. Mm. And Facebook and some of the other social medias had really started to just spike and nobody was doing forums. And mm. I was, you know, opening my, the idea was to tutor um, ACT and SAT exam stuff and interact with students for schoolwork help and do it all digitally, right? Do it all um, online and, uh, and I didn't, it didn't really matter that the numbers, I, I think I set my yearly subscription at, I don't know, I think it might've been $75 for the year, something like that. And the idea was instead of teaching to 30 students in a room, analog, old style, it was teach to 300,000 students or forget 300,000, 3,000 students, um, and my audience is is the internet my audience is the you know the hundreds of millions of people on the internet and it never really worked out i mean it just it wasn't um i don't know maybe my timing was wrong the website was kind of an older style look um but that was the idea and some of the impetus was my um my my most my early my original youtube channel i have a i think it's up to 85,000 views I have a video on the most dangerous game Mm. and not only did it come out in 2015, but it is useful. Students go to it for a seven minute review of that story because freshmen around the country read it. So it's Mm -hmm. the most dangerous game in seven minutes and the comments are hysterical. Of course, it's like, Oh man, thank you. Or not all heroes wear capes and you know, all kinds of funny stuff. Oh, I needed this for my test. You're the man. So the idea was provide something useful, provide something that people want, give the people what they want. Is it? And that was the idea. So the Patreon thing is, um, it it is, is cool. And I didn't, I hadn't made the connection that Keen can now do that. And I I hope him the best. Um, And you even, I don't know if you saw one of the other comments in that video was someone saying, I support Steve Keen because he's a service to the world. Yeah. Which I thought was great. Well, and I responded to that 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 comment with, you know, I, I support him as well. But the thing is, is that I said there was episode twenty 
and it, it's it's our most viewed episode so far, and this is with Fox Day, mm -hmm. uh, who who rarely makes uh, appearances, right? Uh, video appearances anymore, mm -hmm. and he's the owner of Castilia Publishing, mm -hmm. and so Steve is actually going to do the third and final. Uh, release of debunking economics with mm. uh, Castillo Publishing, and oh. hopefully have that out by the end of um, uh, this year of 2022. Mm. So it was 2001 was the first release, and then 2011, and now mm. uh, 2022. So it's amazing, hey? Like it's it's, yeah. and I, and I'm sp I'm going to spend a lot of time uh, on his on his books, um, and. Here, I want to give you a little bit of a sketch of, of, the, of the plan and, and the ambition mm. behind how, how I approach a project. Mm. Um, so with Keen, um, with this book that's being released, I, um, I'm going to spend a lot of time going through the book um, and creating material. Now, I have... You know, in philosopher speak, I would say there's a, a like a suppositional statement that says that one of the best ways to 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 learn is to take something and create something with it. OK, so so my intention is to understand the material. And for me, the best way that I can understand the material is to create something or teach it. Right. Mm, is to, mm -hmm. to take it and create something with it. Right. Right. So. um I will simultaneously create a course and uh, and write a book about the work of Steve Keen. Okay, mm. so that as I work towards completion of that, I'll start with a mighty ambition of saying that I want to have a complete understanding of the value that is Steve Keen, and from that will be the emergence of content created on and through through his channel. Now. That is mighty ambitious, but the issue is is that it's a very it's a, it's a very decisive move um, that keeps you focused on what to do and what to create, mm -hmm. guarding against any kind of novel novelty or um, gimmickry gimmicks. You know, mm -hmm. like right. let's try this. Maybe this will work, kind of thing. Right. Because at the end of the process. Um, especially if you find a thinker of value and maybe we'll return to Gatto in a minute, but mm -hmm. um, then you have something that you've created of substance. Okay. So then the process and this, this can go for you and I as well is that we take something, we begin at a, and by the time we get to B or even Z, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And relationships can stop too. But if you, as we progress um, at least we'll have something of value and mm -hmm. You know, that that video that you talked about that students are looking at and they value and they keep going back to mm -hmm. um, is is something that, you know, to this day, you're still proud of. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. And, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. The uh, no, I mean, that's that I, I like that my um, <laughs> I was I was you listening to your process and I'm thinking, man. My process is to think about something that sounds like a really good idea. I talk to people about it. They like it. And then I do nothing. And that really seems to be my <laughs> process, right? I just sit on my tail end here and watch stock <laughs> finance videos and some sports and some other stuff and um, produce very little, actually. So um, uh, that's that I was like, okay, what's Daniel coming up with now? Because this is going to be good. Like, I'm going I'm to steal some of these secrets. Um, and uh, but you're a teacher, though, so you like it's it it should be so natural, right? It's like let's yeah. create lesson plans together. Mm -hmm. Let's 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 approach this book. Let's approach mm -hmm. Gatto from a standpoint of let's see what we can learn, mm -hmm. and then right. when we're done, we're done, right? And we'll move on. Yeah, I'll have to link you to my WordPress site. I have um I started putting lesson plans up on uh, mavericks-within-the-machine.com, my WordPress site. Okay. Um and uh and I the reason why I thought of it is and, and it's somewhat self-aggrandizing, but um I can do a lesson plan and find things that have that are valuable for my students very easily, right? Like hmm. I needed something today 
And I knew what generally what I was going to do. Um, but we're because, again, I'm there are imbeciles who control my life. So we went remote again. Right. So the brain dead mouth breathing twits who run much of New York City, New York State and the New York City area. We are back on remote instruction, despite the fact that it's destructive, lowers IQ, is dangerous for the students in the bad neighborhood where I work, um, and is somewhat pointless with the oh come on variant that we're dealing with now, Optimus Prime, whatever they're calling it. And um, so, um, and children are at no risk. Like th there's there's you could th this is proven now six ways to Sunday. Anyway. Um, I needed something today and it's remote and I don't like doing the zoom thing with students because they're just not engaged. They're, they're just not there. Very, very, very little engagement. It's, it's brutal. And um, I'm not sure what we're doing. It's, it's, it looks and sounds like teaching and learning, but I don't think that's the case. But anyway, um, I needed something I'm, I'm finishing up Death of an Innocent, the article that became the book Into the Wild, which then became into the book, the Christopher McCandless uh, story, where he was up in that bus up in Alaska. I don't know if you know the story. And um, he uh, and I needed something. And, you know, it was just it just flowed like, all right, I'm going to take this paragraph. I'm talking about risk, talk about margin for error. He didn't have much margin for error because he was starting to be hungry and starve and whatnot. And so I had the, the paragraph from the article that he actually left a diary. It's quite haunting. Actually, he has a very short terse diary and then a six minute clip from the film. And I just tied it all together. The whole thing to put together. I don't know. Did it take me 15 minutes? Maybe. Um, and then it was done. It was ready. Wow. So, um, and it's just practice. I mean, after 25 years, if I couldn't do that, I should just take this thing out of my ear and we all go home. Right. Mm. Um, but, uh, but that's, that's the kind of thing that I'm always looking for. Like I can do that. And I did, you know, I created that today. It's just, you know, that the other things, uh, uh, might be on the docket as well, perhaps, but I'll link you to the WordPress site. Uh, because I started putting them up on the internet just to have them for myself and for whomever. That's really interesting. I mean, I, I have this, I have this um, go-to when I'm not, um, when I'm not sure about what kind of content to create, right? Mm. Let's say it comes between A or B, right? I mean, rather than flipping a coin, mm -hmm. the idea is I think, okay, well, which provides more educational value? Mm. I default. That's that's the rule. We default yeah. to educational value. That's great. Oh. Yeah, you sound like one of my mentors. He's no longer alive, but best grad school teacher I had in school finance. A guy named Doctor Michael Yazerlo up in Yonkers, which is a real kind of kind of a quasi ghetto Italian goomba ghetto mix. It's a real big section of New York, uh, Westchester County, and. Um, Guy was smart, and he was the superintendent of a neighboring school district for a while. And when, when he was the superintendent of that school, small school district, he was my professor for school mm -hmm. finance. So it's very, very useful because he was at work every day dealing with district and school finance. Had been a principal, had been an AP, the whole thing. And he said he got he saved so much time. Because people would come into his office with their pitch, software, materials, books, whatever. And he'd ask me, uh, 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 right, hold on. How does this benefit students? Right? Because everybody wants to tell you how amazing their product is. Great. Mm -mm. Skip. How does this benefit students? And he said he yeah. saved so much time by just asking that. It's very similar to you do as well. Like, where's the... What is the most, out of these things, which one has the most educational value, which is, which is a, I think, a great, a, a great approach. Um, unfortunately, you're, you and I are competing with cat videos, um, women with big backsides. Um, <laughs> What's a Goomba, what by the way? What, what, what is a Goomba? Uh, a go oh, a Goomba. I'm allowed to say Goomba because I'm, a, I'm Italian, right? My father was okay. Italian. 
And um, it's kind of like a slang slur word for greasy Italian, mm. right? You know, they walk around outside in sweatpants and they've got the oh, white okay. on white <laughs> sneakers, like kind of yeah. like your Sopranos type thing. Yeah. Right? They'll wear they'll be wearing a pair of white on white Nikes and some some white Puma sweats with a gold chain. Oh, okay. slick back hair. That's that's your garden variety Goomba. Uncle Frankie. Oh, okay. Right. Like I know I had an Uncle Frankie. I had an old Uncle Frankie. There was fat Frankie. Like, <laughs> these are real people. Yeah. So yeah. Real, uh, Goombas, forget about it. Yeah, they are they're great. Forget they really uh, exist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah they exist. They're real. Yeah. How was so, did you did you I enjoy the Sopranos? Did that did that show? Did you like that show? I, I watched the my wife and I watched the first season and I liked it a lot. I didn't get hooked. I really enjoyed season one. No two ways about it. Mm -hmm. um, but we didn't. I should probably try it again, maybe on my own, um, just myself, because um, it was like The Wire. Like we started watching The Wire and we, mm -hmm. we bailed did a lot of profanity, very violent which doesn't normally really bother us, but didn't grab us. Then on my own, when we first got sent home for two weeks to flatten the curve, I started watching the wire again. And I mm -hmm. watched the entire thing from start to finish. So, and, and, and really enjoyed it. Very, very well written. And so I might, the shield as well, another cop drama, the wire and the shield are the two best you'll ever watch. Um, so I should try it with, I should try it maybe on my own Sopranos. Cause I did well, enjoy a lot of that. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to burst your bubble on it, but I. It seems like um, I, I. I went on a trajectory where whatever stage of my life I really enjoyed it, and mm. then I tried to watch it again later on and mm. very quickly. Uh, um, okay. I think yeah. the priorities right now are really, um, you know, just like like reading and creating and. Mm. And and so it wasn't so much that that um, romantic cultural gangster sort of thing. It feels like that was something of my uh, mm. like a, a younger self or something, right? Yeah, yeah, true, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah, I, I get it. Um, I've I've had some of that as well. Gone back to um, I'm a big comic book guy, so I've gone okay. back to some of these comic books that I'm like, man, this was so profound. Now, of course, when I was a late teen, early twenties, and I look at it, and I, it's good. I'm I'm cool with it, but I'm not, you know, like dazzled by it. Very, very few things. That's been the case. Um, I started to reread Watership Down. That was still fantastic. That was incredible, and I think I read that when I was sixteen or seventeen, and then reread parts of it throughout the years, and then had started to reread it with my thirteen-year-old. And I've got to continue because it just grabbed me again. It's just so, so good. But that's rare. But, I, I you, you know, that's that's the exception. So that like like 24. Remember the 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 Kiefer Sutherland vehicle 24? Like I, I'm, I like I, I watched it. My wife and I watched it. We enjoyed it. Yeah. I'm not going to I'm not going to go back to that. Like <laughs> it's just not happening. I find the um, the the. It, it's it's harder to pull me into a movie now, like into a, mm. a series or a movie. Mm. Um, I really liked the Queen's Gambit. I thought that was well done. Mm. Um, That's the yeah. young girl playing chess, right? Yeah, yeah. I read the book. Oh, you know, I haven't really? seen the show. Yeah, I read the book when it came out in the eighties. Yeah, good oh, book. Really? Oh yeah. Good. Yeah. Huh. So you liked this? That was a series, right? Yeah, it was, and, okay. the, and the actress, she was wonderful. I mean, uh, right. yeah, you know, so I, I'd be curious to see what, you know, what Netflix mm. did with it, uh, mm. and, you know, through your eyes, because, uh, yeah, that was, that was a highlight. I like that. Yeah, my mom watched it, because she had read, I, she might have been the one that introduced my brother and me to the book. We were playing chess a little bit at the time, actually going to tournaments and stuff. My brother was very good at it. I was pedestrian, but... Um, I, that might have been the reason why that book reached got to us back then. I mean, I was probably in early high school or middle school when I read that and enjoyed it immensely. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm the same way. Like it take you know I'll, the, what my the and this is the kind of thing where we're talking about with what content or how to create content or what should we or you you know you we us whomever create is um, 
yeah, I don't, I don't get into that kind of thing much anymore. The series, you know, binge watching Netflix. I don't really have a lot of desire to do that. I had time to do it because we were sent home for a year plus. Mm -hmm. So, um, there was certainly more screen time, but, um, you know, I watch, I have a couple of YouTube channels I've subscribed to. And then, um, uh, you mentioned Vox Day earlier. He does do reasonably um, uh, common. He's he's on video quite often, but you have to go to unauthorized.tv to view it, right? It's behind oh. a subscription. Oh, so I his, see. His, his unauthorized that he and his, his crew created is wonderful. And it's, you know, people that have been kicked off of huge, that had big audiences and have been banned for various reasons. Um, and it's UA TV. It's unauthorized, unauthorized TV. So he does a, a, a regular, probably two to five um, video casts for la- episodes, for lack of a better word, um, on that. Hmm. So, yeah. Maybe I should quite interesting stuff. that a little bit. Yeah. And because he's a, a, a slow speaking, thoughtful person, I watch him. I watch some other stuff on there and I pay my, you know, $285 for the year. Mm-hmm. And um, there are a bunch of people on there who I enjoy listening to. So it's that kind of stuff that I that that's the content I yeah um, consume. So and then the investing stuff, you know, me with the commodities and the oil and the uranium and whatnot. I bring it up every week, so you never take. Yeah, pay, but, no, no uh, exactly. No, I was, <laughs> no, but there, I was the, the the here's how I'll nibble on that. Um, mm-hmm. It was, you know, I'm curious about what the because um, because the allure of a BNN channel, right, was something that would always stop me. And I, I does that mm-hmm. ring a bell? Because I'm in Canada. Yeah, I've seen, yeah, I've seen a guy named Josh Young of Bison Interests. Uh, an oil guy, oil investor. He's on something called BNN Bloomberg. I yeah. don't know what the BNN is all about. What's BNN? Well, I think it's the business network, but I don't know okay. what the other end is. The business. Is it a Canadian thing? I don't know. Oh. I really don't know. Okay. Uh, but imagine, imagine just something where, um, you know, you'll, cause these are all like most of the time they're publicly traded companies. Right. And so mm-hmm. <laughs> this dance between, um, like a CEO or, you know, somebody in upper brass who mm-hmm. basically is, is speaking about, um, you know, the financial success or projected success could be earnings, could be anything, you know, related to the, um, uh, it could be even the idea of the company. Um, something that may be buried in, in a pr- prospectus or, you know, mm-hmm. a, a company announcement or something. I always found that that kind of, um, speaking that kind of rhetoric was actually very compelling and almost like a um you know like a um like a fly to a light i thought it was it was always very it, it drew me in always mm. because i was always fascinated about how they spoke right i mean for, other than that i think intuitively i've always had a business mm-hmm. Right. I mean, like I, I think I've mentioned on the show that I've always had a, I was a young conservative. So it was always very interesting mm. to hear business mm-hmm. speak. Right. Right. I, I had the same. I had a similar thing. I subscribed to Real Vision, which is a finance and investing channel that's grown quite a bit, started by some guys who were hedge fund guys who, you know, they're, they're semi retired. They're very wealthy. One guy lives in the Cayman Islands for crying out loud. And, um, even though I have a very, even to this day, comparatively small stock portfolio, it's not like I trade and I'm a big shot. Um, but I subscribed anyway. I just liked the way it was put together. And now, again, this is wealthy guys getting together and starting a, a finance economics channel, right? Realvision.com. They have a YouTube channel, but Realvision.com is their channel, like it's their website. Mm. And they don't put everything on YouTube, of course. There's stuff behind the subscription. And I just I just enjoy it. I go through I go it's what I binge sometimes. I'll go through a two week binge where I'll watch a real vision video every night. And it's usually on gold, silver, oil, nat gas, uranium, commodities in general, or people who I've 
grown to enjoy their commentary. And, and I'll, if it's on, I'm there. And I'm a, you know, again, I'm an English teacher with a, with a comparatively small stock portfolio. And the only reason why I even have a stock portfolio is because I refinanced my mortgage a year and a half ago and I had some money to invest. Otherwise I'd have a stock portfolio of zero dollars and zero cents. So, um, cause my overhead here in New York city is, is a little ridiculous. Um, but, uh, Anyway, I, I, that same kind of thing is like, it's like a vibe. Like I'm the same way, even though I was a young liberal Democrat mm. and kind of have morphed into, I don't even know how to describe myself these days. I liked that way of talking. And I liked it that if you got it wrong, you really lost. And these guys, you know, they got like Kyle Bass, who I don't know, you know, Kyle Bass does the name mean anything to you at all. No, it doesn't. Okay. Kyle Bass was one of the guys who, um, Heyman Capital is his fund. It's, he's down in Texas. And I don't know, it was a small part of his fund in the in 2000, early 2000s. A small part, you know, he's looking at the housing market and he's like, nah, I, mm, this, doesn't, this doesn't make sense. This cannot last. And it wasn't like the guys in the big short who invested their whole show. I think it was, he said it was like 5% of his portfolio. He shorted the entire housing market. So, of course, that turns him into an even wealthier guy than he was. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was on, my point is, he was on Real Vision. And I listen to most of the stuff and watch the stuff that he's, when he's on, I usually, I usually tune in. And he said the worst thing that happened to him as a young trader, he was at a trading desk in some, you know, some firm and he made a trade and it worked out spectacularly. And he's like, man, this is easy. This is great, man. I'm good. Right. This is pride, right? You know, this is, yeah, yeah, this yeah. is, this is Odysseus telling uh, Poseidon he doesn't need him anymore. Right. Go to the height. <laughs> right? okay, go, yeah. go somewhere, you know? Yeah. I'm Punk. good. Yeah, yeah. I'm good. I don't need you or anybody. Yeah, yeah. And, and and so and then he said it was terrible. What happened? Be, that that was when the case because the next one was a, a, atrocious. Right, he just got his face ripped off. And I'm thinking, here's this guy, extreme, exceedingly bright, gutsy, smart, now very very wealthy, and he's talking about getting his face beat in, and he wished it, wished it gone the other way that he'd yeah. gotten his ass handed to him first. And I just like that kind of stuff, right? It's not, it's not false modesty. And the, you know, the guy doing the interviewing was like, yep, I know how that goes, right? And you think you're king of the world. You're 23 years old. You're, you're fresh out and you're at a desk and you hit a home run. And you're like, man, this is great. This, is, this finance investing stuff is such a breeze. And then, mm-hmm. you know, then the, the drill to the temple comes in and <laughs> brains come <laughs> flying out of the next trade. So anyway, I like that kind of stuff too. So. Um, well, my, my, my philosophy on that was that, um, and I think this has been actually, the wisdom has actually been, um, explained, I think, and I think it's fairly common knowledge. I don't, I don't really go back to those circles too much anymore, Mm. but I think that, that the advice was to, uh, take and realize your gains in a, in, in, in a lifestyle change. Mm. in a slow incremental lifestyle change right so if you if you have a gain then take it and realize something that has that will even even a little bit change your life Mm. Hmm. because because the market can go the other way and you'll you'll notice that you'll live in a fictional world based on where it's going what what the balance is right Mm -hmm. it's all just a, a fictional projection Right. Yes. Um, but maybe the wisdom actually comes from the female side of our, uh, you know, our better halves. Right. Mm. Like, you know, what does this mean for us, Douglas? <laughs> yes. Well, that's that's what my wife says. I'll, I'll, she'll like, just tell me when we're wealthier. Like, she doesn't yeah. want to hear about. She doesn't want to hear about natural gas reserves. Yeah, yeah. Or like upstream investing. Yeah. Uh, you know. Eh, T- just tell me when it's finished. Just tell me when when we we see what we see. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, and I think I think that the the smallest improvements uh, can always deserve a pat on the back, right? Mm-hmm. So say 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 for example, there was something that was rather consistent and reliable that was 
five hundred dollars a month. Mm-hmm. Um, man, that's interesting, right? Like, you know, what would that mean? Well, that's six thousand dollars a year. Um, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and effectively, that's a trip to Europe mm-hmm. every year. Right. right. What does that yeah. mean for experience? What does that mean for? And it it it. It, it it has a way to kind of, um, and it doesn't have to be something that is entirely for you if you're more of the mm-hmm. altruistic. Um, if, you're, if, if your motivation is more on, you know, what can I do for my community? And I'll, I'll bring up something that I was impressed with with you. I think um, I think you traveled with some students and went on yes. some trips. and Two trips. Mm-hmm. That's pretty amazing. I'd, lo- I'd love to hear mm-hmm. about that. And I'd love mm-hmm. to hear about where that went, where it's going, mm-hmm. um, how it came about, and you know what, you know, what lies in, in in store for that kind of initiative in the future. Huh. Interesting. I didn't think I didn't think didn't I'd be think talking I'd about go, this. But I didn't think yeah. I was going to go there, right? <laughs> yeah, but but uh, it goes. But it's such that I I'm going to hold on to what you said about the investing thing. I like that's a very grounded based way to do it, rather than rather than constantly live in the, well, I have X number of shares. If they go to this, it's X hundred thousands of dollars. That will be great in 2024. Like too often, I I think you brought up a good point just for my own self. Too often I'm in that world, which could be a completely fictional world if things go differently than I expect or than other people expect, right? It's not it's just not that easy, right? It's not that easy to, to make that. So I'll, I'll keep that in mind. And the, the, the trip thing, yeah, it would be a trip to Europe. And, or like the, the idea with that was um, my, uh, uh, a colleague of my wife's joined a, I want to say it was a, um, one of these left, what's it called? Mid-level marketing things. Like uh, I can't think of the name now. Multi level, multi level mm-hmm. deal, and I don't mind those. They don't. Some people get all upset. I just, eh, you know, this one had a real service. It was, um, it was for travel. I, I'm blanking on the name now, but it was a mm-hmm. traveling thing, and you join it, and you get people to join under you and enjoy the benefits. And if you get more people to join, it's beneficial. But, but they, but you didn't really have to do all of that. You could just join, and they had trip packages. Mm -hmm. right and my wife and i went to istanbul in turkey Mm. i think it was 2016 and it was fantastic it was great it was great and there were there were 12 12 of us 15 of us in the group and it was wonderful because we got to the hotel we had brunch they introduced we all met each other the the two or three tour guides it was just really comfortable. And then when we went to the Blue Mosque and the Hagia Sophia and the inner part, they're still that's still called Constantinople. Everywhere we went, it was just ready. Like we didn't have to wait in line. We just went. It was awesome. And we started thinking we could do this. Like yeah. we we could do this. And my wife's colleague, World Ventures is what it was called. Mm. He had gotten us into it and he had also run his own small travel company as a spanish teacher and he had taken students to uh mostly spain but other places throughout the years and and it was and it was pretty lucrative and it was a whole lot of fun and a lot of students really enjoyed it so we planned um a trip to ecuador in 2017 and we did a trip to peru in 2018 and um and we got adults and students and my wife did most of the heavy lifting and 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 the, the planning and the the ladies here really did all the hard work i just you know kind of follow along but um it was it was a real it was a whole lot of fun and the students like the guy my 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 wife's colleague jose he had mentioned to me that you know sometimes at the end of these trips People are, you know, we're at the airport and we're getting our bags and we all go our separate ways. He said, sometimes people like start crying. I'm like, yeah, come on, stop it. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, enough. Right. Don't, that's laying it on a little thick. That's the schmaltz that we use to, you know, just <laughs> rub on everyone's face. <laughs> stop, stop playing. And, um, but no, we got back from Ecuador in 2017 
And a couple of the people, they were like, they were weepy. They were like, one girl was like crying. She's like, this was great. I'll never forget this. Yeah. And um, so we did the trip to Peru was, um, was awesome as well. We did too much. We, 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 uh, we did too many things. It was too rushed, but it was still great. Went to Machu Picchu, which was amazing. And uh, a few other places. And the idea was to keep doing that. But then, you know, the, the novel coronavirus era came in and um, I'd like to do more. And we're kind of tangentially sort of thinking about doing more stuff, but with, you know, the restrictions change and the rules change and what do you need to do to travel? Right. Like if you want to go to Colombia, we want to go to Medellin, Colombia. Well, guess what? There's a curfew. There's they, they've like dialed down and clamped down harder recently Mm -hmm. it was better six months ago Mm -hmm. so that they just keep changing so as of now it's kind of on hold we're just keeping an ear to the ground i'd like to go back to the sacred valley in peru i love i loved it the Mm -hmm. old inca territory that sacred valley just that valley alone from cusco down through to machu picchu is just just awesome so Mm -hmm. much history so it's just fantastic. So that's where TFT Travel Group comes from. And so if you go to TFT Travel Group, you'll see pictures of Peru and whatnot. And, and it's, it's, it's something. So it's, it's, it's there. It's just we're not acting on it really right now. Yeah, my, my stepfather is Greek. Uh, he passed mm. away a number of years ago. But he, um, yeah, it, but mm-hmm. he, um, he, he, some of his, his piece of advice for me was that you'll never regret traveling or education. Mm. And I, I still think that uh, traveling is a, a really um, a form of education. Mm. Um, I agree. My, uh, my feeling on it, however, is I think a little bit more, um, I guess, progressive. And I mean, left leaning in terms of mm. you know, a climate sort of issue. So I really challenge, I re- it really challenges me to, to, um, uh, to to get the travel bug again, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, but with the with the publishing company, um, I think uh, it would be really great to take some of these the classics and uh, the Hellenic philosophy and get place yourself in the Aegean Sea. Mm, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I of course don't think you should hold back. I don't think the climate stuff. Because these we again the the imbeciles who are not they shouldn't be allowed to make eye contact with people like us, and they're traveling to climate conferences in private jets. We've talked about this before. Mm-hmm. If they're doing that, which is just pointless virtue signaling and status jockeying, you with students and whoever else, or just creating your own content to travel to a place like Greece and be on the Aegean Sea, and creating priceless content is way more worth it than some doofus Hollywood starlet pop tart flying, you know, in some Gulfstream jet to, you know, cry in front of the United Nations about, you know, climate change. Your stuff is, has value. Her nonsense has none. So I, 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 that, that would be my case. For that, and I think your stepfather was right, and I, I, I really think he was right because I'm very late to the party with the traveling stuff, mm-hmm. right? I, I wish I had done way more traveling uh, in my younger days, for sure. No two way. I mean, I've never been to Italy for for crying out loud. Yeah, yeah. Which is a, which is ridiculous. Well, I wanted to. There's um, there's one particular piece of created content from a young content creator out of New York that I, I would like to share with you, and I think it um, shows the diversity of the community that we have, uh, you know, within our group. So um, basically, it was a uh, a book, not a book report, a book review. Mm-hmm. Okay, of Barack Obama's, um, uh, I think it's his memoir, right? Mm-hmm. So it was the Promised Land, and so the I, I'm going to share my screen with you, and okay, and, and this shows, I think, the power of content creation. Mm-hmm. 
Okay. And okay. the kinds of things that, that we do uh, with our community. Okay. And so, I, I, you know, as the, as the owner and the founder of, of Planksip, I, I, I get excited about these kinds of ideas that come in. So, mm. um, okay. So here it's called Brobama. And, okay. Uh, Is that the latest book, the one that you mentioned? Um, I, I believe so. It must be, yeah, because it's. I think Dreams from My Father was the original one. Right, right. So, so he came to me and he said, you know, I'll, I'll do, I'll, I'll do a. He's done lots of reviews on our site on various mm. different books, and he was he's a very prolific contributor to the to Plank Set, mm. and and this one uh, runs, I think, a full hour. Oh. Okay. And and Douglas, you ready for it? Okay. He wrapped it. Oh. Okay, wow. so here, here here we go. All right. Let's take a peek. So it's like Bobby Frost laid down on Kitty Hawk. Caters can't relate, cause they ain't really with that witty talk. Meet well, I'm from the Witty City, and it ain't New York. Talk about the shy south side till I die. Get the cubs, man. I know that I've been described as a perpetrator of war crimes, but at the time everything was so damn crazy. I couldn't really let none of y'all words phase me. I was just doing what felt right in my heart Often it was just a shot in the dark Far from a walk in the park But I'ma be blunt Look at Trump, who do you want? I mean it's like this Long story long It's a mighty long story We should probably move on to Chapter one Huh Cool, eh? That's, that's really cool Man, that's not what I expected Okay. So what I'm, I, I think the thing is, is that there's always going to be a lot of touch points. And one of my mm. biggest challenges about trying to convey something new is that I don't think it, it actually penetrates for mm. um, multiple passes. It doesn't actually penetrate until multiple passes. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean by that? Like, I, I could be put in front of an audience and say, um, plank sip is this mm -hmm. but already having to do that I have to I have to parse it down to a point that negates a lot of the stuff that we're doing right right and so you know the visionary perspective of this was that I'm creating a platform for fellow co-creators mm -hmm. right and so that I think that the best way, and it goes back to my original point here in, in, in today's episode, was that I want students and adults to co-create like this. Right. right? Well, I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't say I'm, I'm, I'm looking for somebody to put a one hour wrapped version of. <laughs> There's no way I could have done that. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. right. And so, yeah, you couldn't have looked for that. I couldn't have yeah. looked for that. Right. And mm. you know what? It does. He, he has to now understand that the reality is that has to compete just like with you and I with cat videos, <laughs> big butts and right. Right. Yes. <laughs> and the viewership is non-existent on it. Right. But the revolutionary mm. idea that I have with the, the publishing model that is plank sip, is that I want to have the size of the original Greek polis in Greece that was at, at its at its zenith was ten thousand, mm. and my idea is is that if there are ten thousand, we'll call them journalists. Okay, this mm. is what I refer to them in some presentations. These are journalists that are actually reporting on the truth, but on a broad and in a broad way, mm -hmm. right? Okay, so you know, going into uh, the classics and creating content, okay? mm -hmm. things value that will last and don't participate in that media cycle of here today, gone tomorrow. Right. right? So that 10,000 size polis now has the ability 
from a media model standpoint to descend on a topic. Like, can you imagine a, a, a group all descending on something from Rogan? Right. Like Joe Rogan, for example. Right, right. Yep. One person will have a hard time doing that, but mm-hmm. 10,000 will get, we'll smash through that, that, that barrier of, of mm-hmm. media. Sure. With content yeah. that is, and, and that's my vision, right? Mm-hmm. That's, that's mm-hmm. the vision. Now, of course, I've been in the same arenas growing up as a young conservative thinking that, you know, the best way is to, um, you know, come up with something novel or invest and what's the returns and all these kinds of languages and all of this kind of thinking. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I think that um, something that really lasts and is a real contribution to society has to do with so much more. And it's, Almost infinitely, I say almost because that's that would be hard to quantify, wouldn't it be? Right, <laughs> right. It's almost infinitely um, harder to come up with, and so that was the challenge of this intellect: is to try and say, how do you create a media outlet that reinvent reinvents what it means to be a media outlet? Mm-hmm. Right, and yeah. so it was it was things like this that. Um, I want to. I want to. I want to. I want to ignite uh, not only the youth, mm-hmm. but the adults to to move in that direction, right? Mm-hmm. And one of the most important takeaways, I think, um, and then I'll get off my soapbox. But the the idea is is that you create something. If 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 you have somebody that you are interested in consuming in terms of media. Mm-hmm. I think you have to say, ask yourself, will they engage with you? Right? Like I'll, I'll use, I'll use Steven Pinker as an example. Do you know who he is? Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. I, um, yes. Not so vaguely. overly familiar, but vaguely. Yeah. Um, or we could use, I mean, somebody else, but Steven Pinker's. No, I, I, uh, I've seen, I've seen clips of Pinker on Joe Rogan. It was years ago, but. Joe um, Rogan's an even better one, right? Okay, so okay. for example, if somebody says, um, and they consume Rogan on a regular basis, right? Mm-hmm. My challenge to somebody who's young, or it doesn't, the age doesn't matter, young or old or you know, middle age, it doesn't matter. If this is one of the places that you turn to, like it is for millions of people, I would say, what are your chances of getting on Joe Rogan? I mean, at this point in time, and for majority of the population, it's right. going to absolutely... It's zero. Zero, yeah, basically, yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. So my, my urging is that um, we should try and create content with people that we have an, uh, um, an ability to create content with. Mm-hmm. Right? Right. So, yes. you know, it's like, how do you get better... At being a basketball player, uh, you go play pickup in your local neighborhood, right? You 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 don't get better at doing it mm-hmm. by trying by watching Michael Jordan on TV, right? You know? right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, or you're not advancing anything in terms of mm-hmm. relationships or skill level, or sure, right? Right. This this. This consuming, only consuming, this one-way receptacle is doesn't have the ability to then create on the other side, right? Mm-hmm. And it creates a culture of, well, what's in it for me? We say, well, have you ever seen that 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 idea to say, well, you know, if you if you point your finger at somebody and you say it's your fault, right? Mm-hmm. How many of those fingers are pointed back at me? Three, right? So a right. ratio of you know three back at me to one that way is mm-hmm. is really a good rule of thumb. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's true. You know? Yes, yeah. And huh. so I remember that, and I try and explain to somebody, and this goes for academics, right? So if I approach an academic and I say, um, "I'd like to create content with you," mm-hmm. and they say, "Well, okay, well, what is your viewership? What is this? What will I get?" and I think. I got, I, I've got to, I've got to rescue this. Otherwise, you know, we're in big trouble because. What do you mean not, by rescue? 
I have to rescue the potential of being able to co-create with this particular person. Okay, because they've already thrown sand in the gears by asking you about what what I'm going to give them. How much clout you have. Yeah, right. exa- okay. Exactly. Right? right. And so, sure, everybody can do a little bit of upward momentum in terms of like uh, networking and ascending that social ladder. Right. We can mm-hmm. we can all do that. We can all go from where we are to one step a little bit higher. Right. We, right. Can, all, we can all do that incrementally. Mm-hmm. Um, and the idea is being able to build meaningful relationships, hopefully friendships along the mm-hmm. way. Right. But if you try and make it transactional and say, well, say the the academic says to me, says, well, OK, well, you know, what kind of viewers are you going to get me? That's a red flag for me because I try and mm-hmm. say it's not I'm not trying to get you. <laughs> that's that's right. not my job. Right. Yeah. Huh. You know, I'll work with you. Right. Right. And 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 that is it's surprisingly how um how weird that is in our society. Yes, especially someone in academia where I wouldn't think that that would be one of the early questions or a question at all. Exactly. You know what I mean? It's difficult. Like yeah, I'm surprised. I mean, part of it is cuz just the way I am, like I was just looking to talk to people online and have good conversations. So, um, you know, I mean, that's why I re- I, that's why we're doing this. Cause I'm like, yeah, I, I, I'd like to connect. Um, there's a truck driver. I, I did at least 10 or 11 episodes with a guy named Quincy Johnson. I need to reestablish contact with him because it was just good conversation. The guy's a trucker changed his life. He had a messed up childhood was goofing around and became a trucker and it, and he's now doing well and um, kind of a conservative libertarian type, big, you know, big gigantic black guy drives a huge truck all around the country. And at no point were we saying, you know, he used to be big on Twitter and I don't know if he still is. He's been kicked off a few times and um, I've only been kicked off once, but he keeps going back. But anyway, um, at no point where we're like, well, I mean, is it, this going to get me more followers? Like, are we going to, you know, have a YouTube channel with X amount of whatever? Like, it, 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 I couldn't even tell you how many views those videos had. I have no clue. I don't care. Right. I'm not trying to brag about it. I just, that I'm surprised that an academic with that sort of, so, you know, the ethos of, well, let me, let me talk. And, you know, if I affect a mind, a young mind in particular later or soon or whenever, then it's worth it. I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm, go, I'm going for, I'm going for a convergence here is that mm-hmm. I'm, uh, um, I am pro market. Yes. So I, I would love to see a market driven mechanism or an entity, i.e. Mm-hmm. a publishing entity in a media group, which is mm-hmm. what I have be profitable, uh, right. be dialed into the market and be wildly successful with those values. Mm. Yes, I then see what you're I've, saying. Then I've hit the convergence of what. Right. And so, so great word convergence too. I like the way you use it. Yes, I get it now. Right. Okay. And so, so that's the concept. And now, what, what, what my feeling is is that there's a lot of. We'll go back to Patreon as an example. Mm-hmm. I think, like a stock, or a company, or. Uh, you know, you'll see that 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 people maybe who are, I guess, followers in a way. Give me a little bit of news to hang myself here, okay? So mm-hmm. there's, um, if somebody uh, is evaluating an idea, and how's your time? Do you gotta? Do you have to? I'm good. I'm good. Let's do another ten minutes, easy. Okay. Right. okay. Ten, fifteen minutes, no problem. So if you're if you're if you're trying to tell somebody of an about an idea. And Mm -hmm. they say, um, yeah, but Steve Jobs did it this way kind of thing, Mm -hmm. right? (laughs) Um, I think to myself, I go, well, I mean, that's interesting. (laughs) But, uh, you know, chances are you're not going to you're you're not on the pathway to Apple. Right. right? Or Elon Musk. (laughs) Or, you know, something like that, right? Right, yeah. So this is the observer on the outside saying, oh, how do I replicate myself so that I'm like Elon Musk? Or how Mm -hmm. do I replicate myself so that I'm like Steve Jobs? Or, 
you know, that I'm, you know, the, uh, whoever, I mean, you know, right. pick your billionaire sort of thing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I think, I think that's, um, that's so incorrect for so many reasons, mm -hmm. right? Because you, number one, I, I, well, I would say, uh, you know, if, if, if jobs was, was with us still, uh, you know, would he still be able to be so innovative? Quite possibly because what he became and the person that he grew into um, and that reputation, he has, he has that clairvoyant sort of like, you, you know, but he's yeah, that essence, with, the, the essence that's not replicable in a way. Yeah. I mean, he, and, and so you, you can take somebody like that, but you need to kind of make it your own. You need to mm -hmm. individuate, you need to come up with something new. And so you'd mentioned earlier about the, um, the uh, multi-level marketing, for example, mm -hmm. now, I, 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 you know, I try and stay away from that kind of thing, mm -hmm. but um, let, let's take them. It, 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 let's take it in its most derogatory form, which would be like a, a pyramid scheme, right? Which yep. is, I think, even illegal or borderline illegal, or I don't know, right? Yeah, but if in the states, it's flat out illegal. It's illegal. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, if you take it and say, well, how closely, can, how many modifications do I have to do in order to kind of make it legal? And it's really kind of like this, this mm -hmm. form of extortion. You're like, how do I? I mean. It, you know, it's kind of horrific, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah. so, so you have something like that. And I say to myself, when somebody's explaining that to me, I say, well, instead of talking about the value that you see in this kind of a structure of an organization coming in here, why don't you go start one of those? Right. Right. And now we say, mm -hmm. let's stay away from the pyramid structure, but let's say, go and create. Some, so, you know, this is kind of the idea is that, um, uh, you know, the media outlet that is Plank Sip, it, it, it's, it's relatively in its infancy in terms of concept, right? Mm -hmm. But here, earlier, we were talking about Patreon. Now, imagine at the, you know, the birth of Patreon, which was relatively early in the, you know, in the, in the growth of even the internet. Because mm -hmm. the Patreon, Patreon has actually been around for quite some time, I believe. Mm -hmm. And so just like YouTube, you're going to see that some of the people that are elevated at a higher level with YouTube are partially there because of timing. And this goes back yes. to, right? So yep. where in that product or service life cycle did you come in at, right? And then what were the conditions involved in that particular time mm -hmm. and that is the visionary type of thinking that is required in my opinion to really hit that home run right is yes to find out where do you need to be to be on that next wave of something that is big right 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 now i may be presumptuous you know and, and thinking that it's um you know with my group but no i don't i don't think so i don't think so at all because it has to be your you have to build your own thing right the, the I, in my opinion the days of getting on youtube and being a youtuber unless you already have some kind of massive history following of some sort from something else pro sports tv whatever um you're not like someone like stefan molino um had before he got kicked off of youtube he's on unauthorized by the way mm. um i'm convinced that I mean, not only was his stuff pretty good, but he got and started his YouTube channel with the headset in his car driving to work, I think in 2007. Yeah, exactly. Like right. Yeah. You know, and and um, and that mattered. I think yeah. those days are over. I, I, I think so. That's why you building your own platform is, I think, the key. Like my favorite sports writer, sports commentator, a guy named Jason Whitlock. I'm. You know, I mean, he's a, he's wealthy and he doesn't, he sure doesn't need my help or my advice, but it bothers me that he went to the blaze Glenn Beck's outfit and has a YouTube channel. Like YouTube could be like, look, you guys are conservative and we don't like you and we're deleting your channel like, like that. Right. And so it, it's, 
I, I, I'm, I'm like, dude, you know, the reason why you keep moving around is because you're original and thoughtful. This is, to, you know, Whitlock is original, thoughtful, unafraid. His YouTube channel is called Fearless for a reason. Mm-hmm. And he, he just doesn't care. And he talks about sports and, and a lot and, um, and some social issues, too. And I wanted to say, look, man, you can, you can, you should do your own thing, have your own platform. That is now, I think the time right is for that. I think the siloing of everyone in YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and uh, Instagram or whatever, the, the biggies, I, I think that's shattering. I think that's splintering. So I'm not trying to blow sunshine uh, up your tail end, but I think that, um, starting your own platform is key i think it's the only way well and then and then notice how that breaks down because if i if if we operate on that premise and i say yes i've got to start my own platform but then i if i follow that advice uh wholly and truly then i would be telling everybody else they need to start their own platform so what would it be that makes you know the planksit platform unique so that individuals would be able to join and grow and this type of thing. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think the key is, 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 is co-creating and something in a, in a, I'd heard it before, but, but Steve Keen actually reminded me of it. It's called the Dunbar number. Have you heard of that? I, is that the one where the, when the organization passes a certain size, it loses its effectiveness or it loses its cohesiveness, something like that. It rang a faint bell. Someone had mentioned it in one of my, I was in a telegram group and he's Mm -hmm. like, where I think he said, we're reaching the Dunbar number. And I think it was, something like that, the size of a tribe. Am I on the right yeah. path? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And, and and so for organizations, yes, because I, I believe if you look on Wikipedia, they actually talk about a specific company that started to grow based off of that. Mm. But the idea is, is that um, at the size of your network at 150, mm. right? So you and I can have a meaningful relationship. I can have about 150 people that I'm working with. But beyond that, it gets very difficult. And then- right. Let's bring Steven Pinker back into this equation. He's okay. wonderful. Everybody should be emailing him. <laughs> he will respond to you, most definitely. I mean, really? Well, I don't know. He's responded to me for years. Wow. Right? Yeah, but huh. but um, uh, you know, there's a there's about a thirteen percent. I don't know why I use that number. There's a thirteen percent. Uh, I guess like probably probability. I don't know. I, I can't even really assess the price. It's purely intuition. Mm-hmm. That it's actually not him, right? Oh, I see. But he's his... with Harvard, right? But I would, uh-huh. I would think now if that if that is the case, I'd almost raise my hand and say that's a little bit disingenuous to say that this is from the office of don't sign it as Stephen mm. if it's not. But let's give him the benefit of the doubt. I do. Sure. I will say that I think he will respond. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, but you send an email, you th- and he will try and respond in you know a sentence or two. So actually. If you feel so inclined, do the Steven Pinker test, okay? Mm. Reach out to him, send him an email, and try and ask him a question or something of value, okay? Right. Um, he has a book out. His most recent one is on rationality. So that might be, mm-hmm. a, you know, something to ask, okay? Okay. Something, something that's up his alley to quickly answer, mm-hmm. right? So, um, but yeah, so you have... You, you, you have certain people who now are elevated at such a social status that just by pure numbers alone, they can't respond to you. Right. And so mm-hmm. it's not that you'd be like, so number one, you don't want to get star studded and say, oh, wow, he's responded to me. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I feel really special. Right. But you also don't want to say to yourself, oh, um, how would I put it? You don't want to, you don't want to say to yourself, I'm going to try and get in touch with people that I have no shot of actually doing anything with. Right. Right. Like try and reach out to people that you can actually engage with. Mm -hmm. Right. Because there's an alienation in, in, in our culture where we follow people, Mm -hmm. but we, it's a one way thing. And so in, in one hand, we can be negative about and condescending about internet and the value mm-hmm. of social networking right. and the social networking platforms. But is it our fault that we're following, you know, Beyonce on Twitter and <laughs> there's no way she's going to respond to me. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 
Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. And that's build your social networks. Yeah. The social network so that if I'm on Twitter and I say hi at the freelance teacher or whatever, I don't Mm -hmm. know what your Twitter handle is if you ever went back on. Mm -hmm. I don't use it. I'm, you know, I put stuff on there, but it it doesn't get much. uh, You know, Steve Keen is great. Mm -hmm. You know, but you know, how, how much would I engage with him if we weren't, if we weren't meeting every week? Right. How meaningful is that content if I don't know who that person is? Right. Look at what it meant for you to be on that Steve Keen video. Know that you meet with me once a week and that you've seen Steve and you put a, a little note there. And yeah. That I've responded. Made That's a huge, different, huge, huge difference. difference. Yeah, yeah. Force huge multiplier. Because I'll comment on videos. I used to never comment. I don't know why. But um, I think some of it was what you're talking about. Like, I was like, ah, these are people that are on YouTube. I follow them and they're not going to connect. But now, especially since you said when we first met, you're like, well, I just call up people and ask. Because I'm like, hey, wait a minute. You're the guy that was talking to Keen. And now you're talking to me in room 227. <laughs> and the broken down English teacher room. What the hell? Right. Yeah. Like, uh, is this real? Is this a prank? You know, come on, Ken, you know, you're my brother. Stop playing around. And, um, but, uh, but that made all the difference. And so I comment on things and you're right because the people with smaller followings, but, but still decent kind of orbit size orbits, um, they'll either like a comment or or do a short answer it makes a huge difference it makes a monster level difference like there's this guy ken and hotep the hoteps in the black community have a very unique philosophy one that i like and ken and hotep is guys in baltimore and he um pinned my comment to the top of the video oh nice yeah yeah Yeah. so i'm like oh this guy noticed it sorry so and and because of you i'm thinking of maybe sending him an email saying look we should you know i'm in i work in the black neighborhood have for 25 years let's chat for 45 minutes to an hour and i would have never even thought of that until we started chatting but you're right when i commented on the video which i enjoyed immensely it was a huge difference i didn't care about the view count i didn't care about but it was that it was there's some connection there that was very different Hey Doug, guess what? I think your I think your 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 comments is pinned on that video. <laughs> I saw that. Yeah, I didn't know well, you could do okay. that. I, well, because I noticed, I, but you yeah. think about why would I pin it? I, I thought it was a really well um, you know summarized comment about mm-hmm. the content of that video, providing right. value to anybody who might stumble upon it. And right. I thought that's a good not not because we're friends or not because mm-hmm. I mean because I thought that was a good summary of what I thought the video was about. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 And so. it makes, and, and it makes sense. And, and it's great. Well, yeah. I mean, well, we didn't even talk about Gatto that much this week. We'll have to, we'll have to try to steer the conversation to that next week. Um, yeah. there, I, I think about it sometimes during the week, I think about the things that we talk about and because his philosophy of education and kind of being unchained and not limited, it's, it really f- fits not just tangentially but fits directly with kind of the way we talk about especially the way you talk about creating and coming up with content that is meaningful and educational and it, it really does dovetail with the way he ran his class so um we'll i'm to... excited i actually had a few points for uh, i've got tonight but it, again mm-hmm. i i think you're right let's save it till mm-hmm. next week and yeah yeah put them right on the table early and we'll um <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm serious. Yeah. And, and no, we'll, it was we'll, yeah, yeah. We'll was swing good. for the fences because uh, that's great. I, I, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't have other people talk to talk to about. Um, I don't have other people in person that I can speak with really about this, and about what he did. So this will, it'll be, it'll be perfect. It'll be great. Yeah, yeah. Okay, awesome. Until next week, Douglas. Um, I'm signing off. And yeah, we'll do our thing, great. man. Looking forward to it as always. Okay. All right, Daniel, take it easy. Bye. You got it.